we're with an e-tron GT by the looks of it, I'll have to take a look, and this Volvo XC40 Recharge, seeming quite popular in Pennsylvania, oh, and we've passed 750 kilowatt hours as well, so continuing the journey in good form here and uh, going to get a free charge to boot, what more can you ask? And welcome to another episode of Plug and Play EV and our wrap up of the summer travel. So I know there's been a lot of videos there, individual pieces tracking our uh, progress from Boston over to Cleveland, Ohio, and then further on into Illinois, Chicago, uh, up through Wisconsin, Michigan, and basically heading all across the Upper Peninsula. And the last episode that I published earlier this week got us back into Michigan, the Mitten, and uh, some of the final kind of charging stops that we made on a route that we don't normally do. So those were all great. I hope each one, you know, individual one gave a little bit of a feel for each leg of the journey. Main point being that we got several thousand miles done over the course of that uh, three or four weeks, you know, after the Michigan bit, we kind of stopped in Ohio and Cleveland for a little bit. Then we stopped in Southwest Pennsylvania for some family activities. So it was uh, not so much of a um, complete road trip after that. Got a little bit disjointed, but I wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of bookend it, present some of the information that uh, we got through the, uh, the course of that trip. And some of the takeaways as we kind of, you know, finish up, we've done summer uh, 2021 now, we've seen the reliability across Electrify America compared to 2020 and previous years, previous trips we've done, um, new stations from ChargePoint, kind of state level charging networks like the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality's installations and the Ready Charge network, things like that. And just a general kind of uh, feel for where we are with EV adoption, what did we see over the summer that was uh, positive, negative, anything that we kind of want to take away as we head into another winter and uh, then on to hopefully what will be a very big year for EVs in 2022. Just quick context back to 2020. Obviously, summer travel was really disrupted in the you know the height of the uh, pandemic, but uh, we still did a lot of trips. We went over to Ohio, we went up to uh, New Hampshire, across uh, upstate New York, and we had some problems. You know, they've uh, as well as the problems that we had with that kind of notorious route across uh, the New York Thruway and having problems with Herkimer and Waterloo uh, Electrify America stations, which a lot of people have complained about in the past. Um, we also saw kind of around Labor Day 2020, a lot of the East Coast stations going down with Electrify America, and that prompted a full renovation of a lot of those sites. Some of them got similar equipment, but most of them have been replaced with this new um, Signet station, brand new, which you'll see in a lot of uh, Electrify America's promotional materials, and indeed the ones that we see here at this site that I'm at in uh, just uh, close to Boston here. So this one's going in, it's gonna be a Bank of America site, but a lot of them will use these new Signet stations. And you know that's been a big factor in the reliability uh, that we've seen over the course of this trip. So that's one of the first things we'll look at here. So the bottom line is Electrify America performed, you know, not perfectly, but very close to it on this trip. Um, people have since, you know, continued to try and tell me that, uh, you know, EA does not have the um, coverage, does not have the reliability. It's too difficult for normal people to, um, to start a charge session. I mean, I, I understand that it is not as smooth as plugging the car in and going off, uh, you know, and leaving it to figure it out itself, which you do have in the Ford Mustang Mach-E now, and plug and charge capability is built into these stations. It's just down to the cars to, uh, to implement that uh, technology now. But, you know, when it comes down to it, what we're talking about is either plugging in and going or plugging in, swiping and going. For the most part, that's what we were able to do. No dropped sessions, no real worries about uh, monitoring the session. So, you know, from my perspective, that's all we really need. Um, the app, you know, you can decide is good or bad based on the, the UI, but, um, you know, for the, the factor of getting a charge and being able to just leave it and not worry about it, we were able to do that over the course of 12 different locations and uh, 3,000 plus miles. So really no, you know, no problems with that. Obviously coverage, we stopped in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's where we had to leave Electrify America behind and wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to use them again until uh, we got back onto the mitten of Michigan. But that's the same with everybody. There is no fast charging at the current time on the Upper Peninsula. 
There are ready charge locations. So that was the network we tried to use in Elk Rapids, Michigan, which uh, just really didn't leave a good, uh, good impression for the first time using it, but could be connectivity issues there. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. If those locations go in on the Upper Peninsula, you're starting to be very well served. But overall, across the you know this big chunk of the Northeast and the Midwest, over many different states, uh, you know, it's this region is well covered. We've got the chargers we need, more or less, in the places we want them, and um, the the charge sessions were not difficult. It just wasn't hard, except on that ready charge uh, one stop to uh, to get it. Um, so Electrify America came out looking good. Charge Point came out looking excellent. 100% record with them, albeit you know mostly in Michigan and uh, some level twos elsewhere. But you know that brings us more to state level networks and uh, what we're seeing happen on that front. So state level DC fast charging, uh, very mixed bag actually. You know we had some good experiences right out the uh, gate with uh, EV Connect and the uh, stations that are off the New York Thruway. Um, I've had some uh, good and bad reports to those. So obviously the fact that they're 50 kilowatts, uh, 100 kilowatts max in some locations and only single stations makes them kind of a stopgap measure to the wider New York Thruway renovations that are coming. But at the same time, you know, they are really good to have. It means you didn't really have to get off and go and uh, go down into a city. EV Connect did fine, no, no real gripes with them, albeit it was only the start of the journey and not a whole lot going on then. Um, charge point in terms of state level networks, you know, it's always important to remember that charge point is this uh, hosted network. So the host buys the equipment and the software, and then they set their own kind of details, such as times of use, if that's applicable, uh, rates, um, speed of charging, all this stuff is uh, pretty much managed by the host, depending on how engaged they are. And charge point just kind of provides the equipment and the software to make that happen. So it's hard to talk of ChargePoint as a unified network when they're really kind of at the uh, whim of the site owners. But, you know, in terms of hardware and the app, easy to start, really as uh, probably as easy as uh, we had on the whole journey. Plug in, tap the app with near field communication on the station and you're off to the races, the CPE. 250 stations are very reliable. Um, there's been some complaint from other owners who can actually take advantage of the speed um, that when those are paired as 125 kilowatt um, stations, when there's two of them at 62.5 kilowatts each, that you don't actually get the full 125 kilowatts even if you're at the station by yourself because 400 volt architecture cards only get up to around 80, 85 kilowatts. So there's some push back on them actually being, you know, 100 plus kilowatt chargers when that's the case. But uh, apparently the 800 volt architecture cars like the Taycan, the Hyundai Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6 will be able to take advantage of those 125 kilowatt rates. So, you know, a little vagary and uh, nuance to using those. But from our point of view, bolt at 50, 55 kilowatts max. Uh, um, Michigan really well covered on, uh, on the mitten itself. Um, the departments for environmental quality sites seem to be really well placed. They're in all those kind of locations along the shores. Um, maybe the um, east shore needs a little more coverage. The west shore seemed very good for the bits that we did down to Traverse City and then coming back inland to uh, the interstates and um, you know down to kind of Flint, Michigan around that area. So you know Michigan as a state, great job. It's really covered itself up now over the last year. We kind of covered that in the last video, so I won't go into it too heavy. And yeah, really, you know, looking at uh, usage, obviously Michigan was not quite as uh, busy as some of the states we went to. But as we get back into Pennsylvania and um, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, those kind of states, interesting on the EV adoption side, type of cars we're seeing, um, how busy the stations were, and uh, that's what we'll kind of look at next. So in terms of EV adoption, I mean, obviously Tesla has taken the lead um, and that's been the case for many years now. We're used to 70, 80% of the cars on the road, uh, electric cars being Teslas, um, but definitely more diversity as we start to move around these locations, uh, go across different states. We're definitely seeing a lot of Mustang mach -E's. We're seeing the Volkswagen ID4 out there. Um, even more I-PACE and uh, Volvo XC40 recharge models on this trip. Not so many Polestars, still seems to be a bit of a niche car, but um, what would have been in 2020 a very kind of, uh, 
you know, limited affair you may have seen in this Nissan Leafs, uh, Chevy Bolts, and uh, the occasional, you know, Audi e-tron. Um, you're not uh, you're not limited to that so much now. You're starting to see this wider breadth of models and people really getting excited about these cars. You know, marquee owners love their vehicles. ID4 owners love their vehicles for, for the different things they bring to the game now. And, um, you know, it's nice to see that expanding beyond. And so obviously as these uh, new models come out and you're starting to um, pull into stations with one, two, three stalls full, we're looking to the next phase. You know, never did we pull up on this trip and have to uh, wait for a charge. So we were always good on that front. But you're starting to see there were times when we had four cars plugged in at the same time. The, there are enough models, there's enough interest, and there are enough people buying these types of vehicles that the CCS network is going to start to get stretched for, you know, in this case, this case of this site, three, but for the most part, four stations at, um, at these Electrify America sites is going to be the bare minimum. Typically, we saw two charge point stations at the MDEQ sites, um, and that would be enough maybe for those locations, given the level of adoption in Michigan right now. But as you get further east, you're definitely seeing throughout Pennsylvania, a lot of our stops in Bedford, um, Allentown, kind of all over the, the locations, we were joined by other EVs, and you'd see one pulling in, one pulling out. We just kind of made it to the point where we didn't have to wait, but Next year, as you know, adoption accelerates, as people start to look at getting into EVs more and increase in sales of the Mach E, the ID4, and other models like the Ionic 5 EV6, which can charge faster and will prioritize Electrify America, you can start to see those four stalls stretched. So, especially on busy weekends, you know, when you're traveling on holiday weekends, that kind of thing. And another note on networks, I mean, this one is a, a little bit, um, re well, really regional uh, dependent, I think, but EVgo um, starting up, you know, when we had the first Bolt EV, the 2017, as our go-to network, as the kind of crucial um, place that we could fast charge along the route to Ohio, um, they have become just such a tertiary network for us now and such dated equipment, whether it's the single stations that serve the Mass Pike that go you know, unmaintained or the uh, location in Chicago we stopped at, which was years old and uh, just didn't seem to work at all. Um, EVgo, in my experience over the last couple of years, has just been under-maintained, uh, no real forward thinking. We're still on 50 kilowatt stations, single units in a lot of places. So we switch to the uh, kind of standard that we see here from, uh, from those guys. Uh, another site just down the road from this uh, Electrify America site that's going in. This is pretty much standard of EVgo in our area. I don't know what it's like where you are. Perhaps we can have some comments down below if you really think they're uh, they're going great guns. But here, this is pretty typical of what we get. You know, older equipment. This one works just fine, no problems. But it's a single stall, close to the entrance. You know, dated equipment with 50 kilowatts. Obviously, that's what the bolt can take. But if we're talking about what we need for the future, uh, we start to see you know, many more 150 kilowatt, 350 kilowatt, these kind of stations and this location, uh, this kind of location isn't going to cut it anymore. But in terms of the Northeast and the Midwest, we just don't see the, uh, the value from EVgo and it's become a network I would almost actively avoid just because of those dated stations and the maintenance turnaround being so uh, disappointing. You see the one down on Cape Cod that we've looked at over the winter, which took a good couple of months to be repaired. You see the ones along the Mass Pike, which have offline periods for, you know, a week or two at a time, which on the Mass Pike is just a disaster, really, because they can be the only ones that are really available, certainly in that single stall format. And we're talking Electrify America and Charge Point as my first two go-tos, then the regional networks looking at, like, with the ones using EV Connect and um, the Evolve New York kind of system. And then EVgo if we absolutely have to, maybe off the Mass Pike if it's a convenient stop. Um, we did stop at one not far from uh, Pittsburgh that was a decent, um, decent stop in Jeanette, Pennsylvania because we were able to get uh, fast charge and breakfast. But you know, for the most part, these are old, old stations, old locations that uh, may or may not be maintained. So that's just my perspective coming from this area. Um, what are you seeing with EVgo in your area? Is it uh, kind of West East Coast thing? Is it just you have to be in their sweet spot to really uh, to benefit from their investment? But if that's the case, then you know it's not really a true nationwide network.
So those are the takeaways from our uh, summer of EV travel. I know we're well into fall now and the leaves are coming down, so uh, it may seem like a distant memory, but it's always good to look back, see how you kind of found it compared to the previous summer and previous road trips. This one we enjoyed a lot, covered several thousand miles, minimal hiccups, you know, we've got all the data down there that you can go and take a look at in the road trip log. And um, it was really good, you know, eventually we got the recall on this uh, 2020 Bolt EV expanded, so it would have been perhaps a different experience. We still plan on road tripping this for as long as, uh, you know, we have it. And the uh, future videos will kind of address the uh, how long we have it and what's, uh, what's next. But, you know, heading into 2022, things look good. EV adoption is definitely kicking up. We are, you know, on a point where the infrastructure is being used and it's uh, holding up pretty well as far as uh, the areas that we visit. But what about you? Are you in the West Coast and seeing something completely different? Did you make 3,000, 4,000 mile journeys on the CCS Chatamo network with absolutely no problems at all? Or have you had real, real issues? Is it a completely different experience to uh, what I've described here? Let me know in the comments. Interested to hear before we get into the kind of uh, fall and winter travel and its own uh, vagaries of, you know, Thanksgiving peak and uh, hitting the holiday peak, that kind of thing. But uh, thanks for watching. As always, you can expect some uh, interesting videos coming up. So uh, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, do all the things that YouTube enjoys to uh, surface it to other people. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.